Well, I started um, martial arts when I was 15 uh, with kickboxing. Um, later on, I went to, to Porto in university and uh, um, there um, I stopped because I was, I was studying and uh, then I started uh, uh, Hapkido. Um, later on, I started boxing and kickboxing again. In the middle, I did some Kung Fu, did some Tai Chi. I even tried for six months Capoeira. Then I, we also, I also enrolled in wrestling. The wrestling I did the, the wrestling coach along with a friend of mine. We founded the club. We, the club still exists. We, I was there for three years. So I was a little bit here and there. Uh, but my, my main focus was in kickboxing, boxing and, um, and up kido. Um, then I started in 2002, I started with Filipino martial arts, um, which till now is the thing I do. What I recall is the sticks. So I think I, the first, time, first thing we did was single stick and then double stick, I think, yeah. And uh, what I liked was the dynamic. In those days, uh, ah, this is very dynamic, this is very uh, uh, straight to the point. There is no, it is what it is, you see? There is no, ah, if this, if that, no. This is what it is. I, that was uh, my, my thought back in the day. Oh, this is very practical. And uh, having, having a stick in the end is something, maybe it comes from my childhood, I don't know because I was raised in a small place, in a small village with 600 people. And uh, I still has, have pictures of me as a boy, only use, always using a stick in my hand. Because that's the way we play with each other. Or alone eating trees or eating branches or eating something. Or playing, you know, in those times the movies of, uh, of Errol Flynn, uh, I remember Zorro. This kind of characters that use weapons, you see. And later became later later came the kung fu movies that were more empty-handed. But I still recall in my mind that the first notion of of a fighter, let's say, was either with guns, the westerns, either with uh, with swords, the these classics, Errol Flynn, the pirates, and you know lots of. I think, now that I'm talking to you, I'm recalling this. <laughs> that is quite an interesting and funny story. I was in the Philippines in 2006, uh, training there with uh, intensive training with Ernesto Prezas, the late uh, grandmaster. Well, uh, and in one day, he, we stopped training. I was seated in his couch. He was here in my left and he asked me, Hey, Pedro, you have a martial art in Portugal, don't you? And I was not thinking, I was thinking about other things. And I said, oh, what? Oh, no, I don't think so. He said, yeah, yeah, you have the, uh, something with the staff. Oh, yeah, 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 we have Jogo do Pau, but, but I think that is that. I think, you know, but I think it's not. Um, and I heard some stories because my third grandfather, or fourth, was Portuguese origin. And there is some story I heard in the family. Really? Yes, yes, check that out. Well, when I came in 2006 to Portugal, I checked in the internet and um, what I, what, I, what I saw was a seminar being held in Porto. I arrived in September, that was in October, with Luís Preto, about Jogo do Pau. Not, not Jogo do Pau as a staff, but the Lisbon Virgin from uh, Mestre Nuno Russo, that uh, uses a staff and uses also stick. They also have stick fighting. So the seminar was about that. So I went. I went with some friends. We went there to check Luis. Later we became more close friends. <clears throat> and that was my first, let's say, 
contact with something that came from Jogo do Paulo. Okay? Later, the stories I heard about Jogo do Paulo was, was, were always about Jogo do Paulo, because I'm, I live in the north. Jogo do Paulo is in the south, it's in Lisbon. And the master Nuno Russo is the one that organized all, all the material of Jogo do Pau. He trained with old masters back in the 70s, in the 80s, etc. And he trained also in Lisbon. So he, he, he came out with a system that, that uh, uh, incorporates all the good things about different Jogo do Pau schools. That was the thesis. I heard. So, in my head, Jogo do Pau was pretty dead in the north. In 2015, that was funny, 2015, um, we were, I had uh, a friend here, and uh, he was in the airport, about to leave to Sweden, and he asked me, ah, by the way, do you, do you know something about Jogo do Pau here in the north? I said, I don't know. I heard it's dead or they don't do it anymore. Maybe some old people, I don't know. Yeah, but you are not sure, are you? No, I'm not sure. Well, why don't you check it out? Well, I don't know. Let's see. But th that question stayed in my head. And next week, the next week, I, I went to internet again, checking for Jogo do Pau schools. What I could find, were videos that were already from three, four years ago and some, some websites not updated or news not updated. I said, mm, maybe this doesn't exist, but I had references in this place, in this place. So I said, wow, let me check this. I, pick, I picked up uh, um, my camera and I went to these places. The first place we uh, I was I was was Bucus. It's a Bucus is a small village in a region in the north called uh, Cabeceiras de Basto. So in Bucus, that was the first place. Uh, yes, yes, the master is called Master Orides, Mister Orides, Mister Orides lives in this place. So I went to his place. He has a small coffee coffee shop with some small market you know, village, small village market. And he was there, he was an old man, he was in 85 maybe, and uh, he came walking slow, a little bit limping. E quantos anos tem? 85 feitos, no dia 24 de junho. Estou na freguesia de Hugo, do Conselho de Cabeceiras de Basto, distrito de Braga. Sei com a idade mais ou menos de 9 e meio, 10 anos. E depois eu disse, você sabe outros lugares? Ah, isso está morrendo, mas você pode ir aqui e lá. Então, eu fui para um outro lugar chamado Salto in a small, very small village, like 100 people, 200 people, called Corva. And there I, I met some guys. The, the, the master there died two years ago. It, it died in 2013, because this was 2015. And they said, I, I, but here are the relatives, his brother, his, his nephew, his brothers, his nephew, and also Manuel, that was a guy that learned with him and they were beginning the group again, training again. They, they were very nice. I heard different stories, different lineages. <laughs> Fazendo aí, puxava os 
chegava aquela aquela outro e já se treinava, começava a treinar já na, na, na serra, no monte. E já se começava a treinar no monte, já a gente puxava o pau no monte. E depois daí havia essa tradição, havia esses mestres. Tens feito disto uma, uma coreografia e dança e não sei o que. Mas isto é esgrima. Isto é esgrima, isto é... Isto é uma ocasião de repouso, o Rorro, o Ramiro. I had this idea that these, these uh, people would be close, you know, close, in a close community. So maybe they don't accept very well if, I, if a, a foreigner comes, a guy that is not from there, and asks for Jogo do Pau. Because I knew that that was something that they cherish, that it's like a, a personal thing to them. It's, it's, the, it's like their, their life and blood, the Jogo do Pau. So, I thought maybe I have to be careful, and maybe if they are willing, they then I ask if they can teach me. And uh, in Bukus, uh, Master Orid said, "No, I'm not teaching anyone." In in Korva, they said, "Well, we train here and there, teaching. Ah, it's a little bit difficult. I don't know." And then I went, to, ah, yes, you must check Faf, Faf region. In Sepains, another small village, there is a group there. Okay, so in the same day, go to Sepains. Okay, I went there to the mountains. Um, and they arrived there asking directions because I couldn't, I, I have no GPS. And uh, I stopped in a coffee shop and I said, you know, Joe Pau and a guy named Hugo, who is from the group, I didn't knew. Yeah, yeah, that is my uncle. You find him in the market because he has a market. Okay, I went to his uncle to the market. The wife was there. Oh, yeah, but my, my husband is not. Leave your contact. Uh, so in that day, I couldn't m meet him. I remember it was uh, beginning of August and um, <laughs> I didn't even know how he looks like or how he behaves, nothing. So I was a little bit, you, know, you don't know, this is a master that works his staff for more than 50 years. Well, I don't know his character, I would better to choose well my words and <laughs> I was a little bit like that, respectful, of course. And uh, well, when I arrived to his market, he was at the door like this, uh, because he's smaller than me, with a moustache, with his glasses, and looking. Well, what, but in a polite, not very friendly way, but polite, he asked, so what do you want about Jogo do Pau? I said, well, I'm looking for, for some stories, some, and I also would like to, to have two staffs because I, I've been hearing that I was in books, I was this and that, and people talked about the staff, how they love the staff, the weapon. Uh, I said, but why do you want two staffs if you don't know how to play? Yeah, but uh, I, if I have someone to teach me, maybe. Well, to learn, it will cost you, it will cost, it will cost you a lot, I can tell. Okay, um, do you have a car? Yes, follow me. Yeah, I go in my car, you go in. So I followed him via some, some streets, small streets. We arrived at his home, this place. So he went to his garage, he picked up some staffs, you see, these are the staffs. Da, 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 da. And then he said, all this, come here to the street. Let me see what you know. I don't know nothing. Let's see. <laughs> that was what, what does it mean? <laughs> Let's see what you know. <laughs> Is this a challenge? Because you hear these stories from the FMA, Let's Play, you know, or from other, other martial arts, Let's Play. You never know if it's a challenge, if it's for... You don't know. <laughs> the 
but no, he was just. Now I understand it. That was his his uh, his introduction to the first class. You see. So we stood like two hours in this in this street. That was not even. It was like this, full of stones, loose stones, and he was teaching me the basics. This day, when I f he said, "Face me, face me," in a certain distance, all your stuff like this, and then he said, "Pawakara." Pawakara means step to the face. Step to the face. It, it's like a guard. And the, I saw in his eyes, he completely changed his attitude. It, today, it gives. It still today gives me goosebumps, <laughs> because this cannot be explained by words. You feel it by being there and looking at the person, and the energy it gives you the the energy you feel from the person, is, from from Avelino. It's quite special, and you can see immediately that we are talking serious. We are not playing, okay? Although he's not eating you, etc., but he's doing his craft in a very serious way. When he starts moving, well, well, then you can see what 50 years of training do to a person. Well, well, uh, yes, in the north, uh, the context of Jogo do Pau died more or less in the 80s. The context, I mean, to use it on a weekly basis for real, uh, you know, confrontations. Um, that died because of politics, uh, changing of uh, lifestyles, etc., etc., etc. There are several factors for that. And therefore, uh, as, my, as, uh, as, as, uh, as Master Lin says, uh, we, we, pre we continue doing it in a right way, as we were taught, because that is the way to preserve the tradition. And we play with each other. We don't go to look for fights in the, in the, in the streets or in the market. Okay? And that is, that is the standard. Of course, uh, in those days, in the, for you to have an idea, in the, in the 80s, and in the set. when Avelino was, was young, so in the 60s, 70s, he, according to him and, and also according to Mr. Carlos, 90% of the men knew how to use a staff. Because, man, look, if you go to a market, to a fair, and you don't know how to use it, and every, every man are using one, well, well, better for you to stay put and don't make a mess, try to avoid any confrontation, because you will get your head cracked. Pretty soon. So you have to, to to know because those were the times. The the men and the staff they, they live they don't leave house without the staff. They have the staff always with them. And you still see some old people in that in that place. I'm talking men with 80 something now, uh, going out with the staff. You still see some, don't not too much, but before it was everybody. It was common. There were for you to see there. There was profession, professions built around this. The men that did the staffs were, they had a special craft and they sell it and they have business with it. They live from it. They feed their family with this. And the, the, the last man that knew how to do this in a traditional way, way died already because no one cared. Ah, just, he died. He died without telling how to do it. To, to other people. So there is a, a lack of knowledge there now. That is, 
it is a pity. And also, uh, Master of Lino, Master of Lino knows exactly how Jogo do Pau was taught and how it works from inside out. Um, if his knowledge is not, is not preserved and continue, well, it goes away. You can do nothing to repair his, this loss. Master Oritz, for example, passed away in 2016, just uh, seven, eight months after I interviewed him. A new school started, different places in Portugal that uh, still, still try to keep it alive. But in general, I think it's fading away, very slowly fading away. And it's a pity, because Jogo do Pau is a traditional um, uh, game from Portugal. I don't know if it's a martial art, I think it is, but who am I to say, to put that catalog in, in, in Jogo do Pau? But for my standards it is. And I can say also that in Europe is probably the one of, one of, one of the arts that is still alive, old arts that is still alive, taught by people that are alive, not by books, not by books, by people that are alive. And that must be preserved as a treasure, okay? Because it is a treasure. It should be, if, if, uh, if things would run as, as they should, it should be preserved as, as a world heritage treasure. Nowadays, we live in a period where, the, where young people have idols like Conor McGregor, uh, Mayweather, etc. Professional fighters. And uh, they tend to look more in that direction. And uh, of course, traditional things are seen always by young people as, ah, that is for old people. But um, actually, everybody has something to gain with, with the connection with the past. It's all positive if people get to know the tradition and the art of Jogo do Pau. Jogo do Pau, if you, if you have contact with it, it will not steal you nothing. It will give you something. So I only see advantages. And uh, I think people need to be also more open uh, instead of, of uh, knowing everything before they know. People know everything before they really know. That was also my mistake. Uh, with, uh, with not going so early looking for Jogo do Pau. Because I thought, I thought it didn't exist. But it existed.